This program is brought to you by the Stanford Humanities Center. For more information, please visit us at shc.stanford.edu. So uh, we have a phenomenon in, uh, for people who study young people's historical consciousness to focus on textbooks because many of the people who work on these problems come from the discipline of history and history is a text-based discipline. So it re often reminds me of the story of the, the person who has lost his keys in a field but then someone finds him looking under a street light in the middle of the city for his keys and they say, what are you doing? And they say, I'm looking for my keys. They say, where did you lose them? He said, I lost them in the field. And they say, well, why are you looking here? And he says, because there's light here. And it's a very common problem in the way that we study issues of historical consciousness. The people who are, many of the people doing this work and some of the most well-funded institutions, for instance, in Germany that look at uh, young people's historical understanding are almost exclusively focused on textbooks. And some of the work that we've done in the past has shown that, uh, that students, much to our, uh, not to our surprise in any way, are much more shaped visually than they are textually, and that the formative influences on their historical understanding are the historical films that they've seen, sometimes multiple times, and they are much more influential than the textbook narratives that they've been presented in class. So the, in, in one particular study, when we focused on uh, young people's understanding of Vietnam, uh, we learned that uh, in no case did they spontaneously talk about any of the information that was in the textbooks that they were presented. Their frame of reference, and I should even emphasize their common frame of reference across schools and communities, was uh, the images of the Vietnam War that were presented in the film Forrest Gump. Um, a, a German postdoc that I was fortunate to host for two years, Sabina Muller, has studied uh, how young people in Germany think about German reunification. And it's not what's presented in the curriculum, and it's not often what was presented in television documentaries. It comes, their source of information comes from the movie Goodbye Lenin. And so uh, I think that we have a generational issue right now. We have a, a, still a generation of researchers who's formation of their own intellectual firmament took place in a pre-visual time with a focus on books and archives and documents, trying to study a generation for whom that really is a secondary source of information and their primary source comes from, uh, comes from visual media. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, uh, um, for example, if we, if we think of, of um, the changes that uh, uh, were produced on historical consciousness, as Sam was uh, mentioning before, uh, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, in millions and millions and millions of students, uh, of course, uh, Russia, Czechoslovakia, Hungary, and so on. So um, those changes uh, in their minds were enormous, uh, not only because uh, historical contents uh, were dramatically changed from one year to the other, um, a number of studies uh, well known in our field uh, it's been shown that uh, most of the textbooks in many uh, communist countries were radically dramatically changed uh, but also because uh, not only students but the population in general uh, from one year to the other uh, started having access to many films that are let's say everyday experience for any Western uh, citizen, but it, were, they, it wasn't the case on, on, the, communist, on the communist countries. So, so uh, uh, really the impact of uh, films, um, and particularly films with, about history and also recent history uh, on, 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 on historical representations of, of any citizen is, is really uh, impressive. And as I think, as uh, Sam was mentioning before, there's really a lot of things to be studied in the future. 